Well, Alright guys, I've had to change cameras because my batteries are flat for the other one, but we'll um, persevere with this one. For you four guys, this one's for you. So I've just turned up to remove some um, scrap cars and um, it's just Ford Heaven. He, um, he seems to buy them just for one part and then just pulls them apart. So, alright, so what have we got? Just an AU, a BA XR6, that one's an auto. Mate, it's, it's, it just goes on forever. This one apparently is his pride and joy, which is a manual XR6 EL. So, Alright, so you've got another, it's that one, a BA there. Another one he's bought just down there. This fair lane over here. <clears throat> We've got, this is one I'm taking away now. This is an XR6, but it's just an auto. Just took some doors off for his ute or something. So that might provide us with um, a few parts for the XR8 anyway. But yeah, another fair lane, set of wheels. I don't know, odd wheels. Is it a fair lane? No, it's not a fair lane. It's just got like a Fairmont front. But it's, it's an auto as well, tan trim. Apparently this ute will be coming to the yard soon. It's got a manual in it and apparently you four guys will probably be able to tell me it they have um, a different ratio or something to the sedan, so that's why he wants the gearbox out of that one. This car here, um, he was talking to me before saying that it was some sort of um, race edition or something that they bought out, but he can't the numbers don't add up and when he puts the numbers for the engine in it comes up as Ford laser and all this sort of carry on and Ford can't help him. We'll go back around the top here. So another another BA wagon. Um, that one's got to go. I'll come back to pick that one up in the next couple of days. Um, another just a stock sedan. That'd be an auto too, I'd say. At a guess. Got one of them in the yard at the moment. If anyone wants one, it's about seven or eight hundred bucks. She's pretty clean sort of thing. That's the that's the lawnmower and motorbike graveyard. And then another XR6. A bit of Telstra rope happening out the door. She's an auto. She's really tidy inside. That looks like a quite a nice car. Yeah, that one's pretty good. Um, this one's one that's got to go. What is it? It's a BA from the looks of it. Full taxi spec. Apparently I'd done a deal with him on this one ages ago and I can't even remember it, so that was mine apparently. And we've got a couple of ones turned over on their roof, so I've got to pick that one up and that one up coming up soon. But yeah, I just thought it was something for you Ford guys, you know, the Ford graveyard out in our area. <laughs> I just can't believe it, it's absolute madness. But anyway, yeah, I come across these sort of places all the time, but it's just nicer when it's real old stuff. But you know, some people love it. So different strokes for different folks. All right, I'm gonna load this one up. I still got to go to Brisbane today, I got a couple of locals to do, so. All right, guys, there you go, Ford Heaven. Back on the formula again. The boys are busy. Okay, I had this exhaust, this trans exhaust at home. Okay, it was for, I don't know what it was for, but another car. The guys have gone through, they've got the brakes and all that back together now. Okay, um, we've put a set of extractors on her, so you can see there, leave those. A2 sensor on there. Putting the O2 sensor back in. Oh, the white piece. The okay. Um, yeah, so white piece is on, high flow cat, and then I've just bought that exhaust in. Okay. Looks like they've got wheels pretty well fitted up all the way around on it. I've still got to clean them, but it's starting to take shape. So I've bought some cans of paint. Okay. So it's an Alpine white car, as you can see. Whoop, Alpine white, it's just that from super cheap. Very, very dodgy way to do it. Okay, so we're gonna mask up and just try and touch up a lot of these marks and paint the bonnets. And here's our rear lip, which was out on another car. It's got a little hole, a little crack just here. So Lisa's gonna, um, and there's Mia, um, gonna repair that up and yeah, so, the paint won't be perfect, but it will be clean and tidy and that's all we're really looking for at the moment because it'll get painted properly when we get back from the big trip. The windscreens are out and as you can see, he's got cardboard over the front one and the back one to stop any crap going in. 
going to rust convert all that and sand it, prime it and make that right so the windscreens can go back in and they'll be back in for when we paint it. Um, we're well aware that it's not the right way to do it but it is the way we are going to do it because of time restraints, money restraints and what the car actually is and what it's going to be used for. It's not a show car, it is just, it's just awesome. Alright, yeah, so next time you see it, this stuff here will be all tidied up with any luck. See how the boys go for time. And the other sides there, you see. And leave those machining a flywheel, it looks like over here. I'll we'll have a quick look. The flywheel. Yes. Okay, so it's just getting machined there. You can see how spinning around. The surface grinder's got a flywheel attachment on the back there. But yeah, a couple of yellow terra Holden V8 heads there to be done. Yeah, alright guys, I am off to kill Koi to pick up a car. So I'll leave this in the boys' capable hands and we'll call back in later and see where they're up to. Alright guys, me and young Mia are here, alright, and we're gonna give you the hot tip of the day. When you got a paddle pop, right, you gotta smell it before you taste it, because after you taste it, you can't smell it. So go for it, Mia. Smell it. Smells all caramelly. Go, now taste it. And now smell it again, and it just smells cold. Isn't it amazing? So there you go. Make sure you smell it before you taste it, because you can't smell it after you taste it. That's your tip of the day. Been a little bit too much forward in this video. So, all right, we'll start here. Luke's at a mate's place to pick up some stuff that you guys have been asking for. So purple um, VY wagon. It's something a little bit different, half a kid on it. And yeah, she's just a tidy sort of old girl. All right, so where do I even start? VL Turbo, okay, so this, we're just starting that process for the, to, for the wagon build that I've been talking about. So um, here's Luke's mess. So this was a six cylinder, okay, and this was a six cylinder. He put an LS in this and then crashed it. And now he's in the midst of putting the LS out of this into this. Okay, so I'll show you that first. So obviously there's just crap everywhere and this one's rooted. Okay, this is a VL. I don't know if you guys remember in a video a while back, I said, if you've got a project car and you're having a kid, don't think you've got to sell all your shit because you're going to want it back again. And this is a perfect example of that situation. He's owned this car like three times. He's, he built it, sold it, got it back, sold it, and then got it back. And then he was having twins again and he was going to sell it. And I'm like, dude, just put it away. Just, just forget about it. Put it away. You will want it later on down the track. Don't sell it. Because by the time you try and buy it back next time, you will not be able to afford it. So he's had this VL for a lot of years. Um, I don't know how many different... He's the king of wheels, this bloke. Um, you know, it's not... You know, he's been doing the engine bay, doing a clear out on that. But it, it's, it's not that this VL is some special VL. It's just simply... The one he built and we all want our first car back. I'd love to get my first HZ back, but it'd be scrapped by now, no doubt. Yeah, so he's just been going through the process. This thing's fairly tidy, just to put um, the LS into this, LS manual. Okay, it's come a long way since I was here the other day. But yeah, but anyway, here's the reason why we're actually here, which is VL turbo gear. So this had, the last time had VL turbo stuff in it. Um, Luke was sort of hard up for money last week. I've probably paid a bit too much for all this stuff, but he needs the money, so what do you do? You try and help out where you can. So, I ended up with um, everything, as far as I can tell. So, it's an aftermarket um, exhaust manifold, standard inlet. It come with a manual conversion, okay? I've got a set of pedals at home. That loom he's gone through recently and redone. There's a few clips in that that are rooted on it, but a manual turbo ECU, most of the piping I'm going to need to put it in a VL. Um, I think I ended up with two RB30s as well. So they'll go to Leith and he will do them. Okay, so I'll have an engine sitting there ready to go. We'll have all this turbo gear, everything I need. So when we get a wagon, we can put a motor, a manual swap in it. Because I've got it, I've been collecting pedals out of VLs for quite some time because they fit into my Dodgers. They actually bolt to the firewall where the firewall comes around. The plate where they mount is actually perfect for where you want to put your manual pedals in. So I've actually been collecting pedals just by default for a long time. Um, yeah, so we're getting there. Um, paid too much, don't really care, because it's all there. And it's got a good loom. Like, he's already spent a lot of time tidying that loom up, as you can see. Um, 
you know, there's, there's no big dollar bits here, but it's just a case of finding it, finding it all, isn't it, guys? So, yeah, I don't know. There you go. It hopefully evens out the whole um, the Ford stuff we saw this morning. So progress at least. All right, dudes, going to get this loaded up, and I've got to go repair my trailer today. For some reason, it's chewed out all the shackles. Um, I'll go do that. I'll show you what it's done anyway. So you guys have got a trailer, you might want to go and check your shackles. I've done the shackles on this trailer three or four times already. It's done three or four hundred thousand Ks. It's been a really good trailer, but it's just it's getting at the point where I need to replace it, I think. Um, but anyway, get this loaded up, get over the yard, spend the rest of the day on the truck and trailer, get a little bit of maintenance, because we've got a massive week coming next week. All right, guys, let's have a look, eh? All right, back at the yard, we've unloaded all that turbo gear, guys, and I bought all those new pieces for the trailer. Okay, so this is my original trailer. When the business started five years ago, this was her, and this thing has done, oh, if it hasn't done between three and 4,000 Ks, I will be very surprised. I'm on my second set of springs and about four set of shackles. What happens there with me bags full of um, the little spaces, all new bolts and uh, plates for your, for your droppers, okay, which go here. You can see there, I, I know now that that bolt is getting very, very worn. See, it's got that gap there and that one there's sort of moved. And on the other side, it'll be relatively the same. You can sort of see, see that starting to go. It is very, very, and that one there is starting to spread as well. I'll pull them apart and I'll show you how badly they wear. Like I haven't been able to use this trailer because I haven't had time to repair it for the last couple of weeks since I noticed that. But I'll get it fixed today because this week coming, I think I'm gonna have 4 a.m. starts every day pretty well to get a lot of cars out to Brisbane. We're just massively overloaded with cars at the moment and the price of scrap is atrocious so i don't know what we're going to do to be honest but um i'll just fix the trailer and we'll go from there but anyway guys i'll show you what these bolts look like when i pull them out um yeah we'll fix it get it back on the road so here's what we've got guys can you see it's been wearing here see that there it's rubbed away i don't know if you can really see that but it's just very worn and you can see those holes there are oblong now instead of round, like you can see the difference in the old bracket and the new bracket, which just allows it to slop round. The more it slops round, the more it chews out. See how chewed out that is? Can you see it there? You just gotta keep an eye on them. It's, there's not much you can really do with it, because what happens is these go onto these bolts here and they've got that knurled piece there. And once they start spinning in that knurled piece, then it just starts flogging them out. But yeah, the bush is actually pretty good because normally I replace these as well. See these neoprene, th those things there, which are just those. They actually go into there to stop the steel from wearing, but they're actually not worn out this time. Um, I've caught it before, it's gone too far. But you just start getting a bit paranoid when you start seeing, you know, that the, there's movement in there. But all good, don't matter. We'll get it sorted and I can start um, doing two at a time down to Brisbane for the next week. But um, I'll just replace them all and we'll be golden. Matt. You can buy greasable ones of these that have like a grease nipple in the end and a little hole there. But honestly, you can grease them maybe the first time that you use them and then um, you can't grease them again. So you pay this extra money to be able to grease them and you can't. Um, occasionally I'd tip sump oil and stuff over them depending on what jobs I'm doing. But when you live out west here, some of the roads are just atrocious. There's not much that can happen, but just have to replace the stuff. But um, you know, it's just how it goes. The trailer still lasted pretty well for, you know, what it is. But yeah, so I'm just going to grease, grease the shaft and all that, and just put it back in and it'll, it'll be what it is. And then just keep an eye on them and make sure I swap them out if they're looking like they need to be. But anyway, I don't know. Maybe you guys should go check your trailer bolts. The suspension setup on this one, the new trailers have got a better setup. I'll show you that when I get the new hire trailer into, um into use but i don't really like this block setup it, it does seem to chew through a lot of these shackles and stuff like that pretty badly and you end up with a lot of weight on this here you can see i've welded an additional piece over here already to make that bolt there so you don't get that movement but um you just got to do what you got to do it's yeah the trailers are good these tilt trailers it works well but yeah all right let's find something more exciting to show you eh all right, so WRX is running a lot better now. Um, sorry about this camera, guys, but it's the only one I can work with audio. Um, she was a bit smoky before, so give her a rev, Leith. Hey, we may need to put a turbo on it, but um, yeah, she's a bit of a beast. Over here, man. 
Oh no, it's starting to clear up, man. Holy shit. Yeah, well, um, yeah, wasn't really expecting flames, but um, that smoke's cleared up, so maybe the turbo's not rooted, but she's gonna... Probably just a pop exhaust full of oil. So yeah, well, she is gonna be a animal, this thing. I'm pretty happy. But that's actually running really well now. I'm quite surprised. All right. Well, there you go, guys. That's the result from what it was in that last video to now with just half a little play. Um, she's going to be a beast, and she shoots flames, which is pretty good. So, <laughs> all right, guys. We'll see where we end up, eh?